Let's get to uh, the biggest game that we want to talk about today, Austria against France. Mbappe captain in France for the first time in a major tournament. Came away with a bit of a souvenir from this one, a suspected broken nose. 38th minute though, it was a great piece of play from Kylian Mbappe, whose cross would find Max Verber to turn it into his own net. An own goal, the only goal of the game to give France the 1-0 win. We also got to see N'Golo Kante back in action after two years away from the national team. Let's welcome in Frank Leboff, our finest Frenchman, to give him a little start on the show today. What did you think of your front side today, Frank? What stands out to you? Well, you know, I'm, I, I was a little bit concerned at the beginning of the game because, I, you know, you, know, you don't know what you can expect from our national team. And, and they played against a, a, very, a, a very good team and um, a, a respectful team. And, uh, but they did well. They were, they were solid together, they showed solidarity, they worked hard together, especially in the, in the defensive actions. Uh, there was, of course, and we can talk about that into details, a lack of efficiency at front, maybe some selfishness in the last, uh, in the last third. Uh, but overall, you know, except the injuries from Griezmann head, um, Mbappe's nose, Griezmann knee, <laughs> uh, it's, 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 a, it's a good day, it's a good evening for, for the French football. And we got NG back. NG is N'Golo Kante, was man of the match. Absolutely fantastic uh, little guy. And uh, yeah, it's encouraging. The first half was good. Second half was so-so, I would say. But um, solid enough to, uh, to get the three points. Yeah, he was brilliant, wasn't he, Kante? Because it was a surprise call-up to see him back in action and get the start Sorry. today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, Don and I were talking. I mean, Chua Meni and Camavinga, amongst others, on the bench. Mm -hmm. I mean... Stalwarts at times for Real Madrid, certainly at the end, too many at the end of the season. Uh, I suppose Mbappe's kind of the story with the, the nose, which could well be broken, certainly looked that way. He missed a big chance in the first half. He did create the goal because he roasted the fullback for the goal. But the, nose, the, the, the injury to the nose is going to be interesting in a, in a sense that I don't think it's probably going to affect him, him being selected. Uh, but how's he going to cope with it, you know, when the game gets really physical? You know, if he has to put his head in and, you know, go for a diving header or challenge a centre-half. So that's, that, that's, that's a big blow for them. But the French were OK. I mean, I suppose of the big three teams, the supposed big three, you know, England, Germany and, and France, Germany have looked the best. But then again, it was the opposition, wasn't it? The, yeah. the Austrians were more, much more organised in Scotland. Serbia weren't so much organised. I think England were poor. I think England was certainly the poorest of the three so far. And the French got the job done match day one, but Austria gave them some, some problems, particularly the way they pressed early on. So I don't really feel that... I think there's a lot of work to be done, put it that way, from England and particularly France. It was an eventful game for Mbappe. Broken nose, suspected broken nose aside, there was a couple of chances as well. Of course, he set up the own goal too. Yeah. But you've broken your nose, right? Yeah. Before, what is it yeah. like to play after well, it? you hear the crack and then you know you've broke your nose and then the blood's everywhere. What that does, that needs managing. So I would imagine straight away they'll try and get a mask ready for him because it's not something you just say, right, he'll be fine in two or three days. It's going to be painful. And you're always going to be aware when you've got that injury because it's sod's law, isn't it? Whenever you play football, you've got an injury to a nose. Someone's going to hit you in training accidentally or you get a knock in the next match. I think for France today, it was a brilliant test because Austria, I thought, were really, really aggressive. They whacked into uh, Ousmane Dembele in the first 20 minutes, Mbappe the same. They were closing down for fun. I thought they were really good in the game. But then you look later on when they tried to get something out of it because they were a little bit desperate. Giroud missed a sitter. I think, looking at it again, it got a bad bobble. Mbappe missed a sitter. But in terms of how, how they'll be feeling tonight, they'll be feeling really relieved that they got the three points. I thought it was a decent performance by them against really good opposition. But let's go a little bit deeper, if we can, then, Frank, on N'Golo Kante. Because, as mentioned, not many would have expected him to be called up to this national team after two years out playing his football in Saudi Arabia. He's come back onto the pitch tonight. He looks like he's never been away. That, that's incredible. And, and he said, he says, some, some stuff have changed, you know, in, inside the national team. But I'm so happy to, to be back and I, and I give my best. And I said in the last show that I was involved in that if Deschamps called him, it's because he was at the top. And, and um, yeah, as, as you mentioned, you know, Kamavinga, uh, um, Chouameni, Rabio, of course, they can, they can play. But if 
uh, Deschamps decided to bring Kante in is because he knows he can play. So it's why he put him in the middle of the park. The guy is, uh, is a monster. He's a, he's a little guy. You, you, you want to hold him because you love him. Everybody loves N'Golo Kante. I don't know anybody who doesn't like him, <laughs> N'Golo Kante. That's crazy. And the guy is the, the, the biggest cheater in cards game, for example. He's a big mouth sometimes, you know, when he's not happy because he doesn't like to lose. We don't know the real Kante, but everybody loves him. And on the field, the guy will never... He's like a, a small dog, you know, when he bites your, your ankle, he will never let, it, let you go. Is is a wire, is a is fantastic. He has a is a mental uh, with the best of the best, and technically he can very surprise everybody. He seems he seems to be sometimes clumsy, but he does the job like crazy. And uh, well done, Mr. Deschamps, to have selected uh, N'Golo Kanté, and well done, NG, because you're still the man. Okay, this is going to sound a little bit daft, but bear with me. You ready? Uh, well, uh, as you. You ready? I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. So I've been covering the Saudi League this season. Oh. And, and, and honestly, no, 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 on, N'Golo Conte, <laughs> right? I have not seen him all season because of the weather and the temperature closed down because it's nigh on impossible when you're watching and commentating on the Saudi League. It's just a million degrees. It's physically impossible. He'll be so relieved, and that's the Kante that you watch today because he can get around the pitch. He'll be so relieved just for a split second he's away from Saudi because that's his game. He was everywhere, closing down. He had energy. He could run. The temperature was obviously a lot lower than it's normally in Saudi. And he, he ran around like you wouldn't believe. But it wasn't just that. He was plugging gaps. He was filling holes. But when he gets the ball, he's better than what most people think. You, you tend to pigeonhole in Golo Conti as this guy that can just run everywhere and plug gaps and just stop the opposition. When he's got it, he's very, very useful. He's very smart. Which is going to throw the question forward, and I will go back to France, about Ronaldo, who Portugal have got games coming up, and can he still do it at international level? Clearly, uh, N'Golo Kante uh, can, there are, there, are, there are others too, but I just want to sort of throw it back to you, Frank, in a sense that did Didier Deschamps play his hand today in terms of the match day one? Was that, would you say, if that was a semi-final or a final, is that the starting eleven? Is that the French strongest team? Do you think at the moment? Well, you can have some question marks for the for the CBs for the for the for centre backs because Konate is not ready yet. You know, is he coming back or not? Rabiot comes back from an injury and uh, was only able to play like 70 minutes. Uh, we don't know about Chouamini. I was gonna uh, get better and be ready to uh, to play. So yeah, you have some question marks. And uh, if it's a semi-final of uh, of the European Championship, you don't know if it's gonna be the. The, the, the first 11 at front, you know, whether Giroud can play uh, as, a, as a striker, Mbappé on the left side, I, or Turam as a striker and Mbappé on the left side, because I really don't, I don't think that Turam is on the right positioning. Um, um, what about Dembele? What about Kuman, Kuman sorry, uh, also, and he's going to come back. So it's not, it's not for forever that you can see that uh, that first 11 and he can move and, and change because you also have Pava who can play on the right side even if he doesn't want again Konate is going to come back maybe uh, uh, very soon um, I don't know if Saliba is still going to get the uh, the trust of Deschamps and play the next game so many question marks uh, but I think it's good because the competition is huge uh, in inside the squad and you can find yeah you can find a better 11 for the first game was quite enough I think against the Netherlands, you would need to be better. So, you, you know, you look at those choices and then you look at, you know, Germany who are, uh, had a good start being at home. But then you look at England, the other joint favourites, unless it's changed, I don't know, who the hell knows. Uh, and you look at the discussion we had the other day in their midfield. Who can supplement Declan Rice? Trent Alexander-Arnold comes in, he's not really a midfielder. Is it a young Kobe Minor? Is it Adam Walton, who's a teenager? who's got little experience at, at this level. And then you look at, so you look at these issues that Southgate has, he's got these terrific players, but how is he going to get the balance right with Declan Rice? And who is it going to be? And then you look at France, and we're talking about teams that are expected to go all the way, and then you look at France, they've got a Kante and Rabiot today, mm. and if that's not working, they can mix and match it with both Camavinga and Chouamini as a, Chouamini as a partnership, or take one out and bring one in. That's four really, really experienced central midfielders in the engine room, something that England don't have. 
and they are going head to head, do you think, with France? That, that's a big deal. Add Griezmann to that as well. You know, the yeah, way uh, he's got the ability to drop back in and use his brains because when you're looking at modern day football, it's all about dynamism, being able to get up and down, box to box. You still need smart footballers. And Griezmann, when he's got the ball, is very technical. He doesn't give it away. He's got an eye for a pass. But also, he's got the ability sometimes to stand still. Very, very good. Dembele's a frustrating one for me when I watch him still. Couldn't Kunde? Club and well, we talked about Kunde. He's not had a good season defensively at Barcelona, and that could be an area. And we're looking at little areas where you, you could expose the French. We looked at England where they could be exposed. I think it's a little bit more glaring in England's uh, from England's perspective. But you look at the French, and particularly that right side. Jules Kunde has whined and moaned for as long as I can remember at club level about playing centre back. Uh, and when he played centre-back, he wasn't very good. And when he played right-back, he wasn't particularly good. But he finds himself there. But, I mean, Benjamin Pavard can play uh, right-back as well. But there, that is an area for them where uh, it could be a problem. I mean, whatever centre-half they pick... I mean, Saliba Canos, was magnificent today. You know, they've got big, strong, quick, powerful centre-halves, albeit Apomacano has been having a bad time. But that can be changed. So nothing's changed after match day one for these teams. The French are still the strongest, even though... It wasn't a scintillating performance, Germany's was, but I think we all know the reasons for that. Yep. It was, it was, it was the opposition. <laughs> well, there was no getting away from it, it was the opposition. You go full circle, you come back to Scotland. But obviously you've picked out a few areas <laughs> that may be a question, may be a concern. What concerns you with this France side, Frank? It's obviously all positive so far from you, it seems. What would be your worry going forward? What areas? Uh, two areas, in fact. The first one will be uh, uh, the centre-backs because Opimecano and Saliba don't know each other very well. Yes, yeah, Saliba had a good game, but the first chance was, was for Austria when uh, there was a cross from Sabitzer, I think, and Saliba uh, and Opimecano almost knocked him, uh, each other and, uh, and it was a big chance for, for Austria uh, before Menian saved it. Um, that's something at that level you cannot afford. And the other one is at front. Because the talent is so there that sometimes every one of them wants to be the saver that they don't see the better option that they have next to them. And many times I saw Griezmann not serving one time. I think it was uh, uh, Dembele on the right side, the first half. Uh, of course, Mbappe um, does that a lot when he forgets his teammates. But also Turam, I saw Turam once or twice, you know, trying to shoot where he could have crossed the ball. So if they don't think that somebody else is in a better position, they might struggle because if they don't score, they're going to upset the other, annoy the other, and uh, it might be an issue for, for the spirit of the, of the squad. Any issues that stood out to you? Not really, no. Um, no, I thought Giroud had an impact when he came on. He's very reliable. He, he got a bad bubble, in my opinion, when he should have scored. But I just look at the French side and I think they've got confidence. But I think the opposition really tested them today. I go back to how good Austria were and the way Ralph Ranić set his team up to stop France from playing. That's an example to anyone, and again, full circle Scotland. That's an example how you can try and stop an opposition if you try and get in their faces and be aggressive and make tackles and running around, and Austria are really good. So the French today had to problem solve. They had to get the job done. They got lucky with the goal, the own goal, but they created enough chances. And I think what you'll see in the coming games when they get confident and score goals, I think the biggest issue, obviously, is when you look at the injury to Mbappe, will he be sort of match fit for the next game? Will they risk starting them? It's obviously one of them where you go, don't be crazy, of course you've got to play him, but at the same time, you've got to try and manage the injury because it's quite delicate. Yeah, I don't think they'll need to risk him, will they? I mean, you play with a broken nose, but in terms of the broken nose, you could, you know, I suppose in the group stages, you could, you could leave him out. No, it wouldn't be much harm done, I, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, not within the group that they're in. Uh, so, hey, look, it's part and parcel. You know, we're not, we're not wrapping players in cotton wool here. You know, players break their legs, players rupture their cruciates, players get concussed, players break their nose. It's, it's an occupational hazard. You know, he gets injured, it was a bad one, there was blood, it was a, you move on. You know, it's a contact sport. And he has to deal with that. And the French have to deal with it, and, and they will. Uh, they've got players for every position. Yeah. So he's got, he's got options, and Frank said that, and that's a, sometimes it's a problem, but because you think, oh, well, should I go this way with Chirmena? Should I go with Camavinga? Should I, should I play him? And, so I'll play this centre-back, that centre-back. But in that sense, he's got some thinking to do, but that's a good problem to have. So uh, 
as I said, the French, I was surprised. I thought Austria gave them a, a run for the money for a long period. Don't forget, Don said it was an own goal. Boomgardner should have scored. When yeah. a lovely touch from Sabitzer. Just it's actually a bad finish. Look, it was a terrible finish. The referee gave a goal kick as well, and it was a clear save from Magnon. But so the Austrians gave them some problems. There were enough to think about there. It wasn't a cakewalk for France. Uh, but it was a very good exercise for all of them, apart from, obviously, uh, Griezmann got a little bit of a cut in his, his head when he bashed into the, the advertising holdings. And obviously, the big one was Mbappe. But that's not going to rule you out, a European Championship. It's not going to put you off. A broken nose, no chance. So you brought it up earlier, like among the favourites. So now we've been able to see Spain, we've been able to see Germany, England and France. When you've seen them all there, what's your assessment so far, Frank? Who's your favourite of those four? Yeah, as I said last time I was in the show, you know, I had to wait for England, to see England and to see uh, France. Well, I want to see Portugal as well, because I always put Portugal as uh, one of the con contenders. So, but so far, from what I saw, as Craig mentioned, I think Germany were the best, but the opposition wasn't at the top. And I'm sorry, Don and Craig, to say that. But, uh, but that's the, the reality of it. I think Germany seems to be... Um, very accurate on what they've done and, uh, and know each other very well and they increased their game since uh, they played against France that they won away from home in a friendly game uh, and after I would say France is nearby they, they, they're just warming up I think uh, players going to come back and going to get better because you have many injuries like Menia, like Rabio. Uh, they just came back from uh, from injury, so they have to get feedback. I don't talk even. I don't even talk about Chouamini. So I think they're just warming up. I think the only concern that I have is uh, about England. I mean, yeah, they won, uh, but the second half that was so poor and. Uh, and the options are not, as Craig mentioned, the options that they have are not huge. Uh, and uh, and th that's my concern about England. So, but I still think that uh, they can wake up and do better than that. They can do worse than that anyway, because of, with the talent that they have, they have to react. England were the worst out of the lot. I, just, I know people will be watching this going, well, you would say that, but that, 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 no. I, you know, I, I give credit to England where credit's due. They have some terrific players. Terrific players, and that's the problem I've got with playing the way that they played for an hour or whatever, it's certainly 45 minutes. Uh, I am intrigued to watch Portugal. Yeah. I am. No, not just yeah. for Cristiano Ronaldo, but because Roberto Martinez is, I think, damn lucky to be in that job after, oh, he's got some agent. after what he did with Belgium. Any man that goes to the World Cup, plays Eden Hazard, captains him when he can barely lift a leg, you know, you should be taken away in a white van, really. So he walks out of that shambles, and they were a shambles, and he walks into this Portugal, so gets the job. I think he nearly walked into the Barca job at one point. They have, they have an immensely talented group of players going forward in particular. They've got some good defenders, but they've also got some old defenders like Pepe. And I suppose the Ronaldo scenario is intriguing because this guy is a machine, isn't it? I mean, you've got to, he's just a machine, just keeps soldiering on, want to play for his country want to still play for every club and he's playing in Saudi Arabia now, still scoring goals. And and Portugal have battered all in sundry, whether it be the qualifiers for this or the friendlies that they've played. They've scored an immense amount of goals. Right? A lot of them have been against weaker opposition. Right, They've sort of padded their stats Craig. a little bit there. But let's see, Frank, if Portugal can really do it under Roberto Martinez on this big stage because they've got some really... Really, out with Ronaldo, they've got some really good players. Well, the, the only thing, my concern is, if Ronaldo is at the top of the top, and when they use him, because they're going to use him, because he attracts attention, so he attracts the other player, so they will have to play with him. If he's efficient and he scores, Portugal can go very, very far. The problem is, if Ronaldo is not at the top of the top, but they give him the ball, he doesn't score, he gets upset and everything, that can become a problem. And then people are going to get frustrated. I mean, players are going to be frustrated. Ronaldo is going to be frustrated and uh, upset as well. So, and they, it's there that you can have um, problems inside the squad and they cannot um, get their, their dream. Otherwise, if everything's perfect, again, if Ronaldo is good, they can win it, for sure.